Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP ProBook model 450 G1 model. And in this video I'm going to show you guys how to boost up the performance on this laptop by swiping the mechanical drive to an SSD hard drive. Because we know that these processors are really good processors, the iCore 5, iCore 7 processors, but the bottleneck in these systems are the mechanical drive that they have in there. Because the mechanical drive, they have a limit of the read and write speed, as the SSD drive, they have a higher capacity of the read and write speed. So the bottleneck is on your hard drive. If you want to boost up the performance a lot, when I mean a lot, is humongous then swipe to SSD drive. The good brand SSD drives are the Samsung brand or the Crucial brand. Do not get Kingston or do not get Adapta brand. These are really cheap, but they are really trashy. Uh, they don't last longer. So they do the same performance, but they will not last a long period of the time because of the write, speed, the write data on these ones are really low grade. So that means after 100 terabyte or 10 terabyte they degrade really fast but this client wants a kingston because they want to save some money so i don't argue again i'm gonna show you guys how step by step how to do this process number one you want to power off the laptop completely back up your files if you have your files on the old hard drive on an external drive back them up and remove the battery at the bottom cover just by sliding the covers. That should be obvious and lift up the battery. This one is missing a battery. So pretty much you just slide them together and the battery will be lifted. Next, you will need a screwdriver set. I use the iFixit screwdriver set kit as they have an S2 class steel, uh, steel bits. These bits are really tough and steel, so that means they will not go bad. They will last you a very long time. All right. You want to grab that Phillips number one from this tool set. Now down here by the battery uh, jack contact, there should be a rubber cover right over here. With a tweezers or with a pokey thing, remove the cover. There should be a cover just like this one here. So this one is missing. You can grab any tweezers or anything. Just poke it in the side and then lift it up. Obviously be careful. You have to lift it up, they're really long ones. So same thing in here. This one is missing one, there should be a square one right here. Once you remove that rubber, there's a screw right underneath. Go ahead and remove that screw. Once you remove the screw, then you wanna pull these two triggers close to each other all the way. And then you're gonna see this cover is separating and moving away from this jack. Then all you need to do, bring it all the way to the front end of the laptop and then lift it up. Now down here, you're gonna see the hard drive in front end of the uh, laptop. The hard drive is being held down by a caddy, which is a bracket that holds it in place. And this bracket has a four screw, one, two, three, four. Go ahead and remove these four screws. And once you remove the screws, you can grab this handle here to pull it back and sometimes it gets really hard to pull and you can rip this one so don't worry about if you ripped it off so i'm gonna pull it slide it but let's say if yours let's push it back yours is this one is ripped and you can't pull anymore you can help it out by sticking it from here from the side and pushing it from here so pretty much you have to push it all the way back and you should see that separation right in there once you see that separation right there, go ahead and lift it up, bring it up, hold it from here, from wherever you can, just lift it up and remove the caddy with the hard drive. So this caddy, you have to, all you need to do, remember the position of the caddy, the, SS, the SATA connector is here, the power connector is on this side. So your SSD has to be in the same position. So if you put it that way around, it's gonna be flipped the contact and the contact will not go through here, this port. So make sure you put it in the same position. To replace them, you have to remove one, two, two screw on one side and two screw on the other side. So remove those screws and take the hard drive and put this one in the same place and screw them down. Now that we remove, we're gonna lift up this hard drive. This is a Seagate 500 gig. And we're gonna bring the other one in. 
All the Samsungs are really low profile, so you have to adjust the screw holes. Make sure the screw holes match here. All right, now you have the new hard drive in there. All you need to do is to bring it down, put the back end of the caddy down these two uh, ears, down under the, there, right? Then make sure it's all the way flush to the corner and then push it all the way down to the board and then slide it towards the connector and make sure the screw holes match. And the last thing would be here to put the screws for the caddy. Also remember, once you do this, uh, you try to turn it on the laptop, it will turn on and it will tell you there is no operating system installed. That means that you have to install your Windows in here. I made a video how to create a Windows USB boot drive. I'll leave the link in my video description. You can follow that to create your own Windows 10 boot drive. Once you have your Windows 10 boot drive, you can simply just plug it in, in here. I'm going to show you guys, I have my Windows 10 boot drive in here. You can simply go ahead and plug it in. Once you plug that in, all you need to do is to turn on the laptop. Let me see where this one connects. All you need to turn it on, and you want to tap Escape in here, and it says press Escape for a startup menu. Once you press Escape, the menu should come up in on the top. It might take a little longer sometimes, and you have to wait for I waited about 10 seconds now. And it says F1 for system info, F2 for diagnostic, F7 for the spare key, F9 for boot device option. So you're gonna press F9, and in here you're gonna see an option that says optical disk, notebook hard drive, and notebook ethernet. So that means you have to select your USB drive from here, but my USB drive is not showing up in here. So you want to try it on a different port and then you want to restart by pressing Control alt delete again press escape and once you press escape wait for the boot up and press F9 and now you see I switched the placer for the USB drive from the bottom one to the second one now in here actually is showing up the USB hard drive so you can go down choose the USB drive and press enter now it's going to read through the my USB the installation file and it's really easy to follow these instructions. I made a video how to install the proper way of installing Windows 10. I'll leave that link in the description. You can follow the steps of installation on those videos so I don't have to make a long video right now. You can follow those instructions and I'll show you the tricks to remove all the blood work so you have the best installation for your Windows. And it's going to stay on a black screen for a little longer because of the USB. Depends how fast is your USB. So it should take you about uh, one or two minutes and it's going to take you to a Windows installation. There you go. Now the Windows logo comes and in a few more seconds, you're going to be able to see the Windows installation. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helps you guys to do your own upgrade. If it did help you guys out, please click that like and think about subscribing if you want to support the channel. If you have any question or requests, feel free to leave them in a video description comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. So this is the Windows installation. I'm just going to cancel this. You can follow how to install this on my other video that I already made.